there's a, there's a lot there. I mean, I, I really thought this last um, uh, section of, of the paper where you're talking about the kind of uh, decolonial uh, dimensions uh, of dialectic enlightenment to be really, really quite fascinating. There's no kind of hypostatization and, and um, uh, a, a kind of uh, myth, mythology, mythologization of um, a, uh, a better world, you know, that one could sort of nostalgically look back to as they accuse Lukács of doing at, at, at times, right? Um, and to understand this in, in sort of anthropological terms is, I, I think, really, you know, quite a fascinating uh, move. Um, that raises, I think, the question of, uh, of magic um, insofar as m magic presents a kind of mimesis that could be said to return in a way in um, the uh, aesthetic experience where there is this kind of relation uh, of non-domination between, between subject and object. Um, I'm wondering if you could just comment on that, but also uh, really what lies at the heart of the, the philosophical framework of dialectic enlightenment is this early lecture that Adorno does on the idea of natural history and it, that seems to be really important because one of the things that he's emphasizing there is, in a sense, almost a pure temporality of, uh, of, of transience, uh, Verganglichkeit, you know, the, and this, this seems to be quite interesting. Do you understand this as a, a, a way of thinking through um, the, the question of, of infinity, right? Or maybe some kind of um, uh, a... Uh, uh, a mediation between the finite and the infinite. Um, and the, the last question is, I wonder if there isn't in Adorno uh, two different forms of infinity. One is the imminent form that you describe, which has this critical function of uh, enabling social criticism. Uh, it's de-reifying, right? It points to some impossible possibility um, beyond, you know, beyond the present, beyond capitalism. But then there's also in Minima Moralia this injunction to contemplate things, contemplate the world from the standpoint of redemption, which seems to be then a kind of transcendental um, or, or, or transcendent position. Um, and that is a sort of infinity, which I think lead, leads into a, 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 an interpretation of Adorno as providing a sort of negative theology. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd be interested to hear um, your comment. No, it's a very interesting point, uh, Samir. Uh, thank you for these questions. Uh, the first question about, let's say, this the, the colonial dim dimension of dialectic of enlightenment. Uh, actually, I would stress this point uh, because I think that is one of the major contributions of the dialectic of enlightenment for the dialectical tradition. I mean, uh, let's say the dialectical tradition in the 19th century has this uh, dependence on the distinction between the static societies and, and, and dynamic societies. And we know which were the political consequence of that. Huh? Uh, a, a, certain, a certain difficulty to, to understand historical process in no European countries. Huh? And, and you know how, how terrible this was for us. Huh? And I think that uh, at least that, the dialect of enlightenment find, let's say, a way to, to get, get it out of that. Yeah? Uh, and we should uh, really stress this point of the, the intervention, the, let's say, the dialectical relationship between myth and, re myth and reason yeah? and the consequence of that. The cons one of these consequences, there is no static society anymore. Yeah? Uh, for example, my Mises, that is something, uh, as you, you, you had uh, uh, remember, that's something absolutely fundamental for a critical talk uh, today. It's something that is present in, in, the, in, in, in magic, but of course, uh, uh, Dono and Horkheim, they, they don't want to get, to, to, to come back to, to a magical talk, yeah? but they know that there is something that was lost yeah? and should re, re, uh, recuperate. Yeah? It's a, something very Freudian in a way, yeah? because uh, Fro Freud has this non-developmental idea of, of maturation. It means it's not a question to, ju to just uh, pass one 
one, one, one strata and goes to another strata. Yeah? It's a question of to know how to recuperate what was lost in the past. Yeah? And uh, I, I would say, of course, uh, this, this, this structure of, of my Mises is something that is, uh, in a certain way, at the core of the dialectical notion of infinity. Because of, you know that it's not uh, infinity in dialectics, it's not a quantitative idea of infinity. It's not a progress in infinite progression. It's, it's a qualitative idea linked with, with the undistinction between difference and identity. Yeah? And this is the way, this, this is why contradiction is so important to understand uh, infinity. I would say an infinite object is a contradictory one. It means it's, a, it's a, the possibility for a contradiction to create object and not just to, to point a lack of object, uh, as we can see in Kant, for example, the critic of pure reason in the table of negation, for example. Uh, well, uh, what is interesting in this point is uh, it, it, this is the case. Uh, when you talk about natural history, well, uh, uh, I, would, I would stress that uh, this is maybe uh, the point where Adorno is is more close, is closest to 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 young to the young Marx, no? because if you remember the manuscripts, no? uh, Marx uh, stressed a point that uh, there is a, a, a um, um, uh, meta metabol metabolism. Um, I just for, forgot the, the word, but a, a, a type of negotiation. Between, yeah, metabolism uh, is correct. Yeah. Metabolism, exactly. Yeah? A metabolism between human and nature. And this is a, something absolutely important because it's, 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 it's not a question of, let's say, a, a projective uh, uh, structure of TOF uh, uh, um, um, in the relationship with nature. Yeah? It's a kind of, uh, let, let's say, to, 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 to erase the distinction between nature, nature and history. But it's not ju just means well to humanize nature, as na as if nature would be just let's say a reified discourse, but in a certain way to naturalize human, yeah? to, to 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 in a certain way uh, find structures of nature in human in, in the human the human being, yeah? and this is is something that can change the let's say this this dichotomies and uh, and this. These structures of difference and identity that is the base of a representation of top and, uh, and, and the top market by, let's say, what they in the 19th century say, finitude. No? This is one point. No? The other point is, uh, uh, well, you're right stressing, let's say, the presence of two types of infinity in, in the door. No? And uh, one of these types is uh, it's this idea of uh, of, a, of of infinity in act. Let's say that's that's uh, the expression of an impossibility, but an impossibility that that is just the collapse of a, a former order, yeah? a former situation, uh, and the condition for the emergence of a new situation. Yeah? And uh, we can find this in a very strict and strong way. For example, in some aesthetic. Uh, uh, descriptions that Adorno made, for example, in 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 in, in music, musical aesthetics. Uh, uh, let's say the way that the, let's say the development of the of, of the aesthetical form, it's uh, the position of impossibility, uh, and uh, how this impossibility it's it's something that that may the aesthetical form go to its own destruction. Uh, uh, it's really uh, present, for example, in the way that I don't know, uh, understand uh, some pieces of Alban Berg, for example, the, the stretched quarter, opus three, and so on. The, this self-negation that is also a self-construction. No? Well, the, I, I would say this is a, a way that that he find to 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 ex, ex, uh, to let's say to express a, a process, an infinite process. No? Well, it's true that when you talk about the minima moralia and this injunction to contemplate the world in the point of redemption, no, uh, we could we could have the impression that Adorno is trying to find, let's say, a transcendent concept of infinity. 
yeah? that it would be something much more closer to negative theology or, or something like that. Yeah? But uh, I would I would stress uh, I would ask uh, one point: if this transcendent strategy is not just uh, let's say uh, a moment of a movement, yeah? is is uh, it's uh, let's say of course that it, that is. Uh, this the actualization of infinity ex, uh, could could would uh, would ask us for in some some situations this this moment of transcendence transcendence but this moment of transcendence is not is not let's say something that should rest inf infinitely no? it's something that is a, a strategy in the process of reconstruction of the material material conditions of experience. No? So Willow just presented before you. Uh, she's gonna... I just have a very general question, which is, can you say more about the relationship between uh, difference and non-identity? Difference and non-identity. OK. Well, I, I would say that uh, this is, um, uh, in a certain way, the core of a, a possible discussion between two traditions that normally don't discuss one which other. Yeah? Let's say we know this French tradition of the, the philosophy of difference. Yeah? And Deleuze Guattari is, is uh, it's, uh, 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 let's say, a, a very good example of that. And there is this dialectical tradition uh, of non-identity that is presented by Adorno. I, I would insist in, this, in, in, in the importance of this debate, the first thing. Yeah? And the importance of this debate, I think, that concerns uh, how how difference could be presented inside capitalist society. Because yeah? Adorno would have, uh, let's say, a criticism against the, the use of difference as a critical concept, yeah? against the transformation of difference in the critical concept. And, and this, this is not by chance that you will stress this no identity as the form of the present, pres the only possible form of the presence of difference. It means something that, in a certain way, appear as a contradiction inside the real forms of mater mat material conditions of desire, of language, and and of of labor. Yeah? And uh, because he, he stressed this point to say, well, contradiction is not just a form of thought; it's a real uh, aspect of our our world. It means it's something that uh, the, the only poss possibility in, in capitalist society uh, for experience difference is true a logical impossibility. It means, and the, let's say the form of logical impossibility uh, that we know as con contradiction appears then as, let's say, not just a, a, a depth in a normative uh, structure of reality, yeah? but appears also as the, the first emergence of what can be different. Yeah? And we could uh, remember this very important phrase in negative dialectic: what could be different doesn't exist already. Thank you very much. And I, I wonder, uh, from a political point of view, do you think we need to shift from talking about difference more towards non-identity in order to resist <coughs> the movements of capitalism, which kind of incorporate the, the different concepts of difference and then sell them back to us. So do you see non-identity as a more powerful place of resistance than the philosophy of difference? Exactly, no, exactly. This is the point that I would like to come. Thank you so much for this question. Because I, I would insist, uh, this uh, that I would insist in stressing these I, these Adorno ideas that um, identity is the the, the 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 fundamental form of ideology. Uh, uh, let's say it's the fundamental structure of ideology so in capitalist society, because identity in capitalist society is is, is definitively linked with property, uh, with let's say proper. Uh, 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 something that is, is the core of, of uh, uh, a liberal notion of existence. The, what exists, exists uh, 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 occupying one place, occupying 
uh, one determination uh, uh, exists expressing one identity, expressing one, uh, one, one, one structure of predications, it's expressing its own property, yeah? it's uh, uh, the property of, it, of, of what itself. Yeah? And I, I believe that uh, if we, we think, uh, let's say, critical strategies against capitalism, using the notion of non-identity, it means that it's not a question to, to organize space uh, that would be in a certain way uh, in relation of difference with the capitalist space, but it's a way to 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 allow the emergency of something that is totally undetermined in our uh, normal grammar of social conflicts, yeah? because it's uh, the, the, the most important, uh, let's say, uh, the poli political act today would be, let's say, to destitute. This, the social grammar of uh, the grammar of social conflicts that is uh, uh, that organize our poss possibilities of existence, and one of the features of the social grammar is the notion of identity, is the notion of in, and the notion of property. What is my own? Uh, and uh, I, I think that let's say uh, I could even give an, an example of uh, what could be a, a, a political non-identical subject. Uh, uh, I would read, for example, the, 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 the Marxist notion of proletarian yeah? uh, as a possible example of that. Yeah? Because, uh, let's say, in the notion of proletarian, there is two different ideas. Yeah? There is a sociological idea, yeah? let's say the class of, of those that have nothing, just is for, for work, labor, labor force. Yeah? And, but there is also, let's say, an ontological idea. Yeah? Uh, let's say the, the, the class of something, of, of, of those that are not a class, that uh, cannot be a class, that, that in a certain way is totally marked by an ontological dispossession, for example. And the Communist Manifesto. Yeah? Uh, Marx and Engels said something like the, the proletarians, they don't have a state, they don't have a family, they don't have moral, they don't have religion, they don't have a nation. And it's not a question to give a nation, a state, a religion of moral for, for the proletariat. Uh, on the contrary, this void is it's the only possibility to act politically, on, on act upon this void. Yeah? And I say, this is a, 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 maybe it's a very interesting uh, expression of what non-identity could be in the social struggle. Yeah. Thank you so much for that answer. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Well, also, I, I just like to say that um, Willow, uh, whom you just heard from, gave a, 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 an amazing talk on um, the sovereign individual in, uh, in Nietzsche and, and Kant and, and, and Lacan. And one of the mm. things that she was drawing on one of the texts was genealogy of morals, where Nietzsche shows the way in which, exactly what you're, you're suggesting, the idea of the, the sovereign individual is constituted really through an economic kind of relation, right? The, the, the remembrance of debts and the equivalence between a crime and a, and, and a punishment. And this logic of equivalence is related to the logic of exchange and abstract labor, you know? So I think this is, this is really crucial um, to uh, the the kind of attentiveness to, to non-identity that, uh, mm. that you're giving mm. and um, the critique also. Yeah, the very first thing that you mentioned that, that's, you're, yeah. it's a very good remembering. Yeah. Okay, well, I'd just like to thank you again, Vladimir. That was, that was a wonderful uh, talk. And, and thank you so much. Thank you so much.